Hey you wonderful people, my name is Jojo Emmanuel Lawson. You welcome to my usual presentation where I speak to great men of God that have impacted our church today. Um, today we're, we're here right in Accra, Ghana, where many men of God and many ministers have been raised uh, for the continent. And particularly today, I'm in a very, very um, wonderful place, a wonderful place of worship, the North Kaneshi Assemblies of God, which is located in Accra, Ghana. And out of this building, out of this church has come reputable men of God who are doing wonders all over the world. And guess what? I am here with the man of God of the ministry who has been over the ministry in North Kaneshi for over 30 years and he's no other person than Reverend Dr. Harry in Sadu. Uh, Reverend, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank Re you. Reverend, I know you've been in the ministry for so long. Reverend, tell us about yourself and what you've been doing in this great church. Well, I got saved in 1967 and in 68, the Lord called me from the year 1970, I was an evangelist going across the nation, Ghana. And in 1973, I started my first church. And then in 1976, I moved to North Kanishi Assemblies of God. And I've been pastoring this local church for the past 35 years. Reverend, it's amazing because I'm proud to have come out of this ministry and there's so many things that um, you have impacted into our lives and we're so grateful uh, to the Lord for that. But obviously, as you're talking, uh, being in ministry in the 60s and the 70s, how do you see the church today? What What is the church today in our today's world? The Church of Jesus Christ has gone through so many transitions. We've seen so many changes. Uh, one of the biggest challenge of the church today is standing in for doctrinal beliefs. We, we live in a time that we play down our doctrinal stand and our conviction. And I think that if the church will go back and then look at the biblical principles and stand for what we believe and then impact the world, will be able to do so much for the kingdom of Christ. I think that the Lord is so much interested because he said to the children of Israel that you want to believe in God. You want to believe in everything about me. And this, it is the scripture that testifies about me. And you are refusing to accept what the scripture says. I think that is the biggest challenge of the church today. So Reverend, when we talk about the church, what is the church? The church is the believers, the people who are called up by the Lord Jesus Christ. It makes no difference what denomination the person is from. Once the person is saved, has made a personal decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and made him Lord and Master of his life or her life, that person becomes part of the church. So the church is a group of called out ones, not just the local church, even though the local church derives its strength from the, from, the, from the universal church. But when we talk about the church, we talk about born again believers in the Methodist, in the Pentecostal church, in the Baptist, and whatever denomination they are in, as long as Jesus is the Lord and Master of their lives. Mm -hmm. So, Reverend, with your experience in ministry and with some of the blessing and the uh, revelations that you've had, apart from what God is doing, what are the main challenges of the church reaching its goal? We, we have the several challenges that the church is confronted with. Uh, dealing with homosexuality, dealing with uh, sin in the church, dealing with uh, doctrinal beliefs and so forth and I think the biggest challenge of the church is to be able to define what we believe and stand for if the church can 
define what we believe and stand for, then we are standing for the Lord Jesus Christ. But I think that we've come to accept everything to be okay. And sometimes we go to the extent of saying that, well, we should forget about everything and begin to walk in love. When we are walking in love, then we must follow the commandment of Jesus Christ. Because he said, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do in, in the world today, do you think the, the church love, love the world? Because obviously what we're seeing now, we there's so much out outburst of churches all over the world, but is the church reaching its purpose? If we talk about but let's put it this way, when it comes to impact mm -hmm. and influence, the church is seriously losing its impact and its influence because we are not able to define what we believe and stand for for the world and i think that what the world is looking for is people who stand for what they believe if this is where we stand then we, we should uh, uh, completely devote our life to it but i think that the problem with the church is that we've not been able to define what we believe and what our convictions are. So in that respect, what are the beliefs, what are the main core values of the church that every Christian or every denomination should stick by? First of all, the church is called to be the salt of the world and the light of the world. The Lord expects me to shine forth His glory. The Lord expects me as His child to season people around me. People must look at me and see Jesus Christ. People must see, look at me and see me uh, expressing true love to the world. But this is what the world is not seeing. We mix up everything so much that sometimes other people in other faith begin to question whether we really know what we are about. But I think it's about time that the church of Jesus Christ stand up for what we believe. Because as long as we are in this world, we should let people see the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. Let me give you a typical example. I, I was traveling and I, I got to London and I saw a woman with a heavy bag. And I said, ma'am, can I assist you? And I, I held the bag. And she was amazed that this black man was willing to lift up her bag and I carried the bag right into her car. And then she turned to me and said, I think you are a religious man. I said, I'm a minister. You see, that little act of kindness did influence the woman. And this is what the church is supposed to be to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to Reverend Dr. Harry Seydu in Accra, Ghana, who is the head pastor of North Canisia Assembly of God, the church that has raised over 60 to 70 pastors who are dynamic in their ministries. And this man is a very reputable man of God with, with notable miracles and notable testimonies. His, his lifestyle says it all. He's a man of true true message from Christ. Reverend, why have you been so drawn to raising up churches and raising up ministers and not the usual financial anointing, deliverance things, messages that we hear, we've been hearing in the world? Why have you been so much engrossed into church planting and raising people into ministry? Because first of all, the Lord did not send us to convince the world. He sent us to convict the world. The world must always be transformed by the power of the Almighty God. Without the, the power of the gospel working in a person's heart and transforming the person from within, just convincing the person that being a member of a church or, or uh, Christianity is the best is not enough. That person must experience that in his life. And every person who gets born again makes the world better. So I strongly believe that 
if we can establish a church where people meet and build up a lifestyle that exalts the name of Jesus Christ, then we are making the world better. But then if we build up a world of rich people, the world has so many rich people who do not believe in righteousness, who have no integrity, but God is looking for people, though they may be rich, poor, but they have a life of integrity. They stand out and they are helping to change the world. We need people who will make the world better. And that must be found in the church. Wow, so Reverend, I, that, is, that is so remarkable. That is so deep. Leads me to my next question. How do you see the youth? And what, what is your passion for the youth? What is your message to the youth of today, both in church and in the world? You see, the youth are a dynamic force. And all what we need to do is to try to channel that uh, dynamism into usefulness. And the only way we can do this is to introduce them to the Lord Jesus Christ. By the age of 33, Jesus Christ had impacted the world. And you look at all the, the apostles who followed Jesus Christ were men who were young and they influenced their generation. David, uh, Isaac, Jacob, all these men were young, young people who influenced their generation. And I think that if the church will channel its energy, not to condemn the youth, this is not what we are there for, but to show them the way that they can channel their energy into useful uh, tool, then we are, we are doing something for the world. Because the young people will pick up anything they, they, they see as long as that thing can influence them. And I think that any young man touched by God, I've seen young men who came to this local church and they came from a very poor, very weak background. Now some of them have their PhD, some of them are doctors, some of them are lawyers, and they are in a very influential positions in this nation. And some of the, uh, the leaders of Assemblies of God were people who used to sleep in this church because they came from a very poor family. But now, these men are transforming lives through their ministry. Other people are also making it. And this is what the church is for, that we must bring the young people to a place where they will know they are, they are useful and can influence the world. Wow. Wow. Reverend, growing up in this church and in this place, North Tanisha Sims of God, where I call my home, I've known you to be a man of worship. You love your worship. If the music doesn't go wrong, I know you would stop it and make sure the worship is right. Why is worship so dear to your heart? Because not many men of God have worship uh, as important to them or even the music in the church. Why is worship or, or, or good music in church very important to you? Because people come to church so frustrated, they are discouraged, and they must be touched by God. And the only thing that brings the, the presence of God into the church is true worship. In the midst of true worship, we bring the presence of God to the people. And any time that in the local church, we've really entered into the presence of God, it's amazing. In worship, I've seen people fall prostrate before the Lord lying on the floor, crying like babies. I've seen people sit, people come to church well-dressed, and in the midst of worship, they will just sit on the floor. They don't care how expensive the clothes they wear may be, but because of the presence of the Almighty God, they sit there, and every time when the service ends, they say that, 
this was a good service. And I believe it is worship that brings the presence of God into the church. Reverend, um, two more questions. Um, what is the most remarkable testimony? What is the most um, biggest miracle that you've ever seen? Because over 40 years in ministry, there must be one of them that has really blown your mind that you've really said that, oh God, this is just unbelievable. There must be one of them. Which one would you say out of the zillion miracles, which one of them would you say stands out of all your lifetime in ministry? It's very difficult to uh, place a finger on what God has done in my life. Uh, I've seen the mighty hand of God in demonstration in so many areas of my life. Like traveling from one of the crusades, coming down to Accra, and then I got to a spot and I, I had no idea that there was a big hole down there and it was raining so heavily and all of a side all of a sudden sorry there was lighting and the lighting focused on that spot for a few minutes for me to notice that i was driving into a ditch this is a remarkable doings of god because usually when there is lighting everybody knows that it's a flash but this particular lighting stayed on the spot for a few minutes till I was able to maneuver my way in. And then when I was able to cross, then it occurred to me that God has just lightened my, my, my path so that I may see what was going to happen to me. And this is a remarkable miracle from God. This is amazing. Reverend, last few words. With people like myself who are just believing God to be used by God in ministry, what is your message to some people like as young people who are thriving and believing God to reach years and centuries in ministry? What is your advice to the young people, anyone who is looking forward to, to stay in the ministry and do the work of Christ? I think my biggest encouragement to you and to young people who've made it up there goal to stay in the ministry is that stay focused. Stay focused. Be yourself. Everybody is copying everybody. That In a short time, we lose touch as to what our focus is. So I say to young people, in the beginning, it may look to you that you are not accomplishing anything. But before God, so many people are in being impacted because you are staying focused. Just do what God says you must do. And also be in a position where your life will shine forth before God. And when you do that, I tell you, for 40 years in the ministry, and still able to stand, even though people have said so many bad things, about me every time God proves them wrong. It's all because I've made it, made it up my goal to stay focused and do what God says I must do. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been here talking to someone that I can truly, 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 truly call my father because this is where I received Christ. This is where I became born again and this is where I knew the Lord. This is my true father in the Lord and um, he is the pioneer of the, the great move of God in Accra, Ghana. He was one of the former uh, assistant general superintendent of uh, Assemblies of God in Ghana. He's He's been dynamic with the uh, uh, Christian community in Ghana. He's part of so many boards and he's a great man of God. And we've been talking to him live in Accra and he's been such a great blessing to us. One last scripture. I know, Reverend, you always tend to have a scripture for the year. What is your scripture for the people out there that you'd want them to embed um, upon their hearts? I think that this year the scripture that God placed upon my heart is Jeremiah 32, verse 27. It says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And I tell you, saints, 
that as you place your faith in God and then hang on to this scripture, always remember that there is nothing impossible with God. With God, there is always a way. Amen and amen. Well, I, I don't know. We don't have much time. You know the internet is, is a powerful tool, but we don't have much time. But to be able to, to grasp more about this great man of God and to hear his powerful and dynamic messages that are life transforming you need to make your way to Accra Ghana where God is moving in North Kanishi Assemblies of God guess what you can also locate North Kanishi North Kanishi Assemblies of God online at www.nkag.org so nkag.org and you will be able to get more about North Kanishi Assemblies of God you can get all the information that you need hey my name is Jojo Emmanuel Lawson and I'm so blessed that you can watch this program always go to my website 